with you. Also with you. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When the Pharisees with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands keeping the tradition of their elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they would not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed. The purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and the scribes questioned him, Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders? but instead eat a meal with unclean hands. He responded, Well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, His people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrine human precepts. Human precepts. You disregard God's command and cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from within, and it is they which defile. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we're going to talk about laws. What a fun and exciting topic we have on this Labor Day weekend. And we think about law as something that keeps us from doing something that we're not supposed to do. And it's often a, a reaction to a tragedy that's already happened. Think about the laws which have been put into place where something terrible happened and a law had to be enacted to stop it from happening again. In essence, this is what happened in the Old Testament reading that we have today. Because we are a fallen people, we had to have a reminder how to live. And so God gave laws to Moses who instructed us and told us to observe them carefully and to keep them. They also served a practical purpose. They separated the Israelites from their neighbors. And we can see that in our gospel reading today. Where we're at, we are shown that there were examples of disciples who did not ritually clean their hands before eating, but the Israelites would have done so. These walls made Israelites easy to identify from their neighbors. They also had practical purposes, these walls of the Old Testament. Many scholars point out that they probably were beneficial for public health. If you look at some of the laws in the Old Testament, they talk about only eating clean birds when you're going to eat, not touching sick or dead bodies, and also not injuring the flesh. Now, this would have been very valuable before we knew of the life-saving power antibiotics. Not cutting the flesh would have kept you clear from infection, hopefully. And so the laws had many purposes to ensure safety, to separate, but also to give an example of what God wanted the Israelites to do. Unfortunately, however, with many laws, which I know we don't see today, the laws became black and white. Laws were very rigid 
in a world that operates in gray. And this is what we find ourselves in the gospel reading. We're told that Jesus' disciples were condemned by the Pharisees because they did not wash their hands. Now, while this would have been beneficial for public health, it pointed them out immediately. And Jesus said that it's not what one does on the outside that defiles them. It's what comes from the inside. That is what causes defilement. <clears throat> not the ritual hand washing or lack thereof, although good practice. It's what comes from inside. So we ask ourselves, how does this impact us today, thousands of years later? Well, as we go along our spiritual journey, we have to think about why we do things in our spiritual lives. How many times do we do things because we know it's what we should do and not because it's what we would like to do? An example of this, of course, is prayer. Oh, I have to say my prayers. It's what I have to do to be a good Christian. And not necessarily because we want a deeper relationship with God. The same thing is true of Mass. I have to go to Mass. I have to go, but I really don't want to. This is when we're following the law because we're supposed to do something rather than wanting to do something. And what Jesus is telling us today is don't do things because of the law, because they're what you're supposed to do. Do things because of the love of God. When we're given a law, we're obliged to follow it. But when we do something that we're wanting to do, we do it out of genuine love. And that's what Jesus speaks about today. And Jesus also distinguishes between big laws and smaller laws. We all realize that it is a bad thing, hopefully, we all realize it's a bad thing to murder someone. Not good. Don't do it. Bad thing. Jail and all kinds of things happen if you do that. But it is also illegal to jaywalk. Less bad thing. It's also illegal, I just found out, to not notify the DMV if you move and change your license. Now, while that might make the clerk unhappy, it is not equivalent to murder. Except maybe to the clerk. And so, if any clerks are listening, it is not. But, these are examples of laws that are big laws and smaller laws. There's wiggle room in the difference between the two of these, and that's what rigidity prevents us from seeing. Big laws and little laws. And Jesus is saying to us, act and live as if you need no laws at all. What if we did the right thing, not because it's law, not because it's socially acceptable to hold open a door, not cut someone off and scream at them. What if we did it because it was the right thing to do in our heart? Not because of social acceptability or even laws. The desire to want union with God and with other people. In a, perfect laws, we, in a perfect world, we wouldn't even need laws and commandments that said things like, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not be cruel to one another. But unfortunately, we live in an unperfect world. And so we want to do these things naturally. And we have to live in a world where laws guide us, where we have instructions. 
And we get into, because we have to have laws, again, we have to think about the most important and maybe lesser important. To the Pharisees, all laws were important. They were crucial. Washing your hands was so important. And Jesus comes along and says, this one comes from inside, not outside. And so they think, well, then this is chaos. What are we supposed to do then? What, what is there to follow? Well, how do we live a good life as Christians, as people of faith? As How do we move forward? And we have the answer in Mark 12, 30, and 31. When asked about the greatest commandment, the law, Jesus says, Love God with your whole heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. These two things are the law. And all the other laws fit through them. They are the lenses, the eyeglasses, through which we look at everything else. Murdering someone, obviously, is not loving them, as we hear in the Gospel. But many things that have been traditionally called sins could be regarded as jaywalking or not updating our license of the DMV. So, how do we discern then? How do we know? Well, God gives us reason, and intelligence. An informed conscience has always, always been the highest source of guidance in our tradition. An informed conscience tells us how we are supposed to act. And if we follow that, we listen to God within us. This is what Jesus was talking about. Listening to the voice inside ourself. It says, I want to go to Mass because I love God. I want to pray because I love God. Not because there's a law that tells me I have to. Not because I'm forced to, but because I want to be closer to God. And I want to be closer to my neighbor by loving them and not murdering them. We always have to go to the, the highest thing, but, you know, it's a good example. Don't murder anybody. So these are the examples that we're given today on how to live. And we can do this by following a reasoned and well-formed conscience. Love God with all your heart and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Everything fits into that. And all the rest is commentary. And God will guide you from inside with your conscience to know what you're called to do. Ultimately, just following laws won't get us to the perfect gates. But living our lives in a way that seeks to follow the way and message of Jesus, that will. And if we have to change our insides, there's no better day than today to start. May we all have the courage to begin to love God and to love our neighbor. Let us pray. Almighty God, because we fail, you give us laws to keep us going, but also to keep us on a path towards you. But we know that the greatest laws that you've given us, as you told us, are to love you and to love our neighbor. And you've given us the ability to discern how to do that. Guide our consciences and our insides to know what pleases you. And help us always to seek you and to seek harmony with our neighbor. Because if we do this, we will be following your way. We will have clean insides, and we will be undefiled. We ask this through Christ our Lord.